All right, how's it going, guys? My name is Damani. I am a tech artist and 3D scanning specialist. Uh, happy to be here with you again for Turnio and their Turnio Plus tutorial series. Uh, today, we are in my studio here in Jersey City. We're going to be doing a little bit of uh, 3D scanning in studio. Um, and then we're going to be taking that scan data and bringing it into Blender, where I will show you some uh, basic uh, baking techniques to bake uh, both diffuse and normal map textures. Um, our subject today is this antique brick that I found. Uh, just walking around here by the studio. It's by um, like a railroad here in Jersey City. And I found this antique brick that I thought would be a cool subject for scanning. Uh, so I'm going to take this brick over here and uh, show you the workflow for 3D scanning. All right, guys, I just wanted to quickly show you my setup here. It's very, very simple. I have a Canon 6D that is mounted to this light stand. Very cheap setup. And then I have literally a stack of chairs and in the center, the brick. So I'll just be taking maybe 50 pictures, uh, moving evenly in a circle around the subject. So let's uh, just place the camera down and get started. All right, so now that we're back uh, at the desk, I'm gonna show you um, how to import model very simply. You go to file, uh, import, OBJ, go to your download folder where you most likely download the files to. And I have them here numbered. I did the scan twice, brick one and brick two, and I think brick two came out a little bit better. Um, so I'll import that model into Blender here. Uh, first thing I like to do, I go to select the model first and go to object, set origin, uh, origin to center of mass surface. Then you can hit N to open up uh, the transform menu. And then you just want to zero out uh, the X, Y, and Z values. And then uh, click out of that menu uh, to cancel that. Now I like to just quickly uh, rotate my model center. So remember, uh, if I showed you last time, you use shift and control to precisely uh, control your rotations. And you can hit a G to move and X, Y, and Z to constrain those movements. Okay, uh, so you can see in the scan data here, I'm just gonna quickly turn on the texture so you can see. Uh, I didn't capture the top or the bottom, right? I just wanted to do a quick scan for this demo. And then um, I have some of the chair in here. I, I um, Some regrets, I'll tell you. I regret uh, the lighting in the back. I, don't, I didn't have the best even lighting between the both sides. It's not terrible, but it could have been better. And then um, another thing that I regret, um, I should have filled uh, the frame better um, to include more of the brick and less of the chair. Um, so this ends up being kind of just wasted polygons. You want to, uh, when you're scanning, you want to kind of fill the frame with your subject so that the reconstruction uh, focuses all the polygons that it's going to put in into the model uh, into your subject. So I'm going to come up here and switch to sculpt mode. Then I'm going to come down. Uh, to the uh, trim brush. You will probably see box trim by default, uh, but if you hold and drag across, you can pull out the lasso trim. So that's what I want to use right now. Um, and then with the lasso trim, pretty cool, you can pull it out and then you'll see that there's a straight side and a curved side. And if you hit sp uh, space bar, then you can uh, move your, your lasso region even after you've drawn it. So you can, you know, move it and then hit the space bar and then you can move the whole lasso. So I'm going to select uh, everything down here. Give it a little bit to calculate and it'll delete. And that's pretty good. And I can get rid of that bottom here too. Uh, so I'm going to hit uh, the lasso again. Hit space bar so I can move it. I'm just gonna trim. I'm gonna trim like all this here. Pull it back a little bit. There you go. Then it'll calculate. All right. And uh, anything that you is is blank, 
uh, will just be black from the cut. So because that's that's untextured, and this is actually from the reconstruction. That's why it's white in the map, but uh, it's essentially black too. The color stuff we can correct later. Uh, so now I want to show you uh, the baking. So you can go back to object mode, and then I want you to hit Shift D to uh, duplicate your model. Then you can uh, right click to cancel that. Now you have two models in here. Uh, we'll call this one um, our high poly, high, and then uh, this one is can be our low poly. So we'll call it model low. But right now, you know they're exactly the same. Now that I have lo our low and high, um, I will turn off the high and focus on the low. And then we're going to come down to data object properties and then remesh. And we're going to use the voxel remesh tool in here to create our uh, low poly version. So uh, it'd be probably best to go back to solid mode, then go to viewport overlays and turn on wireframe so you can see here. So this is again our high poly. Uh, if you go to viewport overlays again and turn on statistics, you'll see that this mesh uh, currently has 68,000 triangles, right? That's our high poly. But if you start playing with uh, this here, just hit voxel remesh. And it'll produce this uh, quadded low poly version. So when it control Z, that was not the outcome I wanted. I'm lowering the voxel size. So the way that this uh, tool works, it's essentially uh, filling the volume with these uh, voxels, which are you know cubes, uh, volumetric pixels, voxels, and it's using those um, cubes and the size of the cubes determine uh, the outcome of the the topology. So big cubes. Uh, you'll see bigger squares on the topology. Smaller cubes, you'll see smaller squares in your topology. So I'm reducing the voxel size. Hit voxel remesh. You can see now the cubes are a little bit smaller, boxier, and uh, you can see the change. You can see that it goes from 68,000. Uh, hit voxel remesh. Now it's uh, let's do that again. Actually, 67,324 faces. Faces is what you want to watch. Voxel remesh, 474 faces. Right. Um, I'm sorry. Actually, you want triangles in this in this one because these are triangles. So 68,000 triangles, and then when you hit box MS, it changes to faces. Uh, 474 faces, and the triangle value here is if you split these. But these are these are actually quads. Um, so this is you know not bad and a good approximation of our model. I think I want it to be a little bit more specific though, so I'm going down a little bit more. Now you can start to see like that flat region in the back. So I like this better. Uh, I think I might change it to 0 0.02 just to go a little bit smaller. Um, so I control Z. I'm just hitting control Z every time to go back to my original mesh. And then you change these values. And then hit uh, box where we mesh. And then this is the one I'm going to stick with. So this is, uh, you know, about 3000 faces. All right, so next uh, you can go to your modifier stack and you want to add two modifiers. The first one is going to be the multi-resolution modifier. And it's important that they're done in this order as well. Um, and then after you add the multi-resolution modifier, uh, you want to add your shrink wrap modifier. Uh, so the multi-res modifier will add resolution to your model. So if you click uh, level viewport, actually, no, I'm sorry, if you hit subdivide, uh, these values will go up. So you've gone up uh, one subdivision, hit it again, two subdivisions, and uh, hit it one more time, and it will probably calculate a little bit and then give you three subdivisions. So I've subdivided the model three times. Then in the shrink wrap modifier, I want to add my target, which is the model high. And right when you do that, you'll see that this, mod this mesh will snap to the one below it, um, pulling all the details in, right? So then you, know, you can hit this arrow and hit apply, or you can also see it says control A. So you could select the modifier. This is selecting the modifiers and hit control A, and that will apply uh, the modifier. So hit apply to the um, shrink wrap. And then now you can see with the level viewport, you can go down and remove that detail, or you can go up and add that detail back. And you'll see the numbers in here showing the adding and removing of faces. Okay, so that's how you add and remove resolution. Um, 
but what we don't have now is our, our textures. Uh, so we have our textures on the original high model. They're not on this new uh, low poly version. So do that. Uh, first, you want to come to UV, uh, the UV edit menu. And then you want to hit uh, A to select all. Then you hit U to bring up the UV mapping menu. And you can do smart UV project. And then you want to add a little bit probably to the island margin. Let's just make sure you have some bleed rooms. So add 0.15. Hit OK. And now you have these UVs that represent the low poly model. Okay. Next, uh, you can go into the shading tab. And then uh, you want to create a new material. So hit this button. And then you want to create a new texture. So you can hit the new uh, image icon. You can call this uh, normals. And then uh, we can multiply this by two. So you can go do this math in here and double the resolution of the map. So 2048 by 2048. So I'm going to hit times two. Uh, you also want to hit 32-bit float for the uh, normal map. And it's going to be a blank map. Hit OK. Um, then what you can do is you can hit Control and right-click to sever that. And you want to bring this node a little bit further down and connect it uh, to the normal. But before that, you want to add a node in between. Actually, you can do it first. So connect it to normal. Then hit Shift A. And then uh, you want to search for the normal map node. And then if you drop that in between, it'll connect it all up. So that's really nice. Um, then the next step, uh, you want to bake. So um, do that. Uh, we're going to go to this little camera icon and then come down to where it says bake. Or I'm sorry, switch it to from EV to cycles. So switch your, your render engine from EV to cycles. Then come down to the bake tab. And you want to make sure that bake type is set to normal. You want to bake from multi res. Uh, you want to select your multi-res object. Then you want to select um, your texture. Forgot to reduce our multi-res back to its original level. Let's check that. Modifiers. Yep. So you want to go down to zero before you bake um, on the low. So go back down to zero. Go back to the shading menu. Tap this. Make sure you select it, then hit bake. And there we go. Now you'll see it baked from high to low and created our map. Okay, so now that we have a normal map, the next thing to bake is a texture map. So you hit shift A, you wanna add um, another texture node. I'm sorry, image node, uh, image texture. So you want to connect this to base color, hit new, also 2048. This one will be the diffuse map. Diffuse. You don't need 32-bit float for this. Uh, hit OK. And then from here, you want to bake uh, from high to low. So it's from selected to active. Then you want to uh, make sure you're selecting this guy. Um, sorry. Yeah, there we go. So hit the low first, then hit the high. Select the diffuse. Um, then you want to switch your bake from normals to diffuse. Uh, you want to change your samples because uh, you don't need uh, 496 samples to bake this texture. So you just to change it to two. So I didn't have selected to active selected. You need that selected. Um, 
then you hit bake and there you go it baked our textures there is an issue here and i do know how to fix this you see these regions these regions are just regions that the bake didn't search deep enough for uh, so to fix that go to extrusion it says inflate the active object by the specified distance for baking this helps matching points to points nearer to the outside of the object so we can change this to 0.15 select this and hit bake again and that should resolve that issue there you go so you can see that some of those missing missing areas are now uh, in our in our texture uh, there's still maybe a little cavities here in these darker regions, but it's, it's honestly not terrible. Probably bump it uh, to 0.2 and do one more bake, and it'll, it'll resolve that. So I'm going to do that right now. One last bake. Okay, I'm happy with this. So uh, now let's go back to our layout view, and let's try to compare these two models. So we have our high and our low. I'm going to hit uh, G and move the low out across the x-axis and then I'm going to turn off um, shaded and go back to uh, this view so then turn off go to the overlays turn off the wireframes and you can see these are our two models um, go to the rendered view light These are our two raw, our two, uh, I'm sorry, bricks. With the textures that we baked. Um, and the difference between these two bricks uh, is the amount of polys. So if I have the high, you can see that the low one is just um, 3,000 bases. Uh, if I hide the, the low, then you can see the high one is 68,000 triangles, right? So these are our two bricks. Uh, this one has uh, a normal map and diffuse texture. Uh, and this one has uh, just a lot of polygons and the diffuse texture. All right, so that's, that's really the workflow, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, can't wait to join you next time for the next tutorial.